Hello all, it's the 21st of May 2017, you're down the allotment with Dan in Essex, United Kingdom. Great weather, certainly appears that summer is underway. We've got temperatures coming up in the following week of high teens, early 20s degrees C, which is very good. Had some a lot of rain earlier in the week, that's very good. The ground is still wet in places, when you dig down you can still feel the moisture and the plants are loving that. So plenty of rain followed by some lovely sun, great recipe for growing good temperatures as well hopefully some uh, good crops to come for us all so I'll show you what I've been up to this evening so these are dwarf beans this bed here was already made in the allotment when I uh, took it over I'm going to slowly let this allotment develop I've not gone mad at it just uh, using bits and bobs that were here really so in this raised bed here dwarf beans they're the bush variety you don't need canes to support these and these are a variety called speedy because they allegedly grow very fast and yield good crops quickly so we shall see about that two strawberry plants obviously i don't know what variety they are because they were already here when i took the allotment over last year another bed here next to it the same sort of size as you could see as this one here and what i've done is you can see it's been enriched with some good horse manure here i do love horse manure and uh, there's a gentleman around here that gives it away for free so i uh, can't say fairer than that and i've got some courgettes that uh, you may remember these growing away in the polytunnel and i was a little bit concerned as to whether they were going to grow but the warmer temperatures really brought them out and they are variety strata diatalia i believe that's how you say it so we've got one two three four there and they're doing quite well actually this one in particular is looking good some tomato plants one two three i was given these so i don't know what variety they are but uh, we shall see these canes these supports were already here when i took the allotment over so i've decided to leave them because i might decide to utilize them at another year but you can see what i've done here taking advantage of what was here now my long-term viewers know that I like to grow things that are a bit different. So bitter melons, um, knobbly cucumber, they look like. They don't taste like that. They, have, they are said to have uh, good qualities for those with diabetes, but uh, type 2 diabetes, that is. But um, don't take my word for it. Do your research before you eat these. And they're not normally grown in climates such as the UK. They're normally sort of a southeast asian sort of thing and warmer parts of the us just generally warmer parts of the world i have grown these before in uh, the poly here my pod one of my poly tunnels before and you'll see if you check my videos out from uh, last year just how many crops i got off of these so bitter melons other names such as bitter gourd bitter melon um i think filipinos call it empalaya of course uh, every language has got their own terms for it but uh, I'm growing two outside here just to see how they do I'm not expecting them to do very well but if they do do well they'll grow up over these canes take it over and the crops will hang so that should look pretty good if it happens but uh, I'm not holding my breath on that one now the potatoes you may remember I set these a few weeks ago I've earthed them up now to stop them going green and obviously to get a greater crop because the more room there is around the seed potato it can then put out its uh, you know tendrils or roots whatever you want to call it and uh, produce nice crops hopefully so different varieties here maris piper a steamer i've got some desire here and uh, another one which uh, escapes me right now king edward that's it but uh, earthed up 32 seed potatoes they came from where did they come from they came from savers i believe it was pound for eight potatoes some of the uh, signs are still here I'd like to keep them in so i don't forget what i'm growing so yeah expecting some nice spuds can't beat roast potatoes can you and here some leeks now i set these leeks in the polytunnel as you guys may remember in a pot i don't generally make too much of a fuss when i set leeks normally i just put them in a you know put some compost in there in the pot and scatter the the seeds in there and see how they come up and they did indeed come up in fact i've got i've had I've got too many so i'll probably swap some with another allotment here or gardener or something but uh you can see how i do it what i do is i dib my hole you can use a dibber you can use a stick you can use the back end of a broom whatever you want really i use the back end of my one of my hoe hose here to do this and uh, you can see that um so i dib the hole and then i just drop it in like that 
you guys get the idea. I don't make too much fuss over these. Really, you should cover them up so that um, the birds don't uh, pull them out. But uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that because I've got so many. And if they do come up, I'll simply set more. So there we go. Here. Now, these are my runner beans, variety Enorma. Once again, I think they, the seeds came from savers and they were very cheap. So they're looking very good. I set these probably six weeks ago or something like that in the polytunnel just to keep them sort of away from the frost and give them a little bit of extra warmth and the head start. But they're looking good and um, ones like this look, they're starting to make their way up the canes. They'll be wrapping around soon. And you can see the bed here, <coughs> excuse me, is a very nutritious growing medium. I've went through this before, but uh, there are new people viewing my channel. But uh, it's a good quality growing medium of soil, horse manure. There's some grass cuttings in there. There's some leaves. You can see uh, that look. That, that there was uh, some sort of quince fruit, I think, from last year, and rotting veg such as uh, cabbage leaves and stuff, just chucked on top. Not worried too much about. And uh, you can see the soil growing medium is good. It holds the moisture and I'm expecting these to make their way well and truly up these canes and hoping for the best for some epic crops of runner beans. Let's see what else we've got that we can... Here we go. Now over here we have some sweet corns and they're looking good. I like to grow them like this because they say that when you shake them they help fertilise one another. I think they're F1, so they'll probably be fer they'll probably be uh, self fertile anyway. But uh, you know, one of them things that I like to do. So you could see along like that, quite a good quite a good amount here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's probably about over 20 here, and if each one produces two cobs, that could be 40 cobs here. So quite happy about that. The berries. Oh, looking good. What have we got here? We've got black currants that I put in and I'll just see what we've got. There's two varieties here. One is osier bean and one is Baldwin. Not too much of a crop on this one, but this one here is carrying a small crop. There you go, as you can see there. So not massive, but uh, you know, give it five years, probably not even that. You should have some decent crops here. You can see we've got raspberry canes coming up all over the place. Now this allotment is, as I stated earlier, I'm, I'm letting it gradually develop. I'm not being regimented with this because I want to see how it goes. I'm not the sort of bloke that will come down an allotment and just completely dig it, start clearing it and start from a blank canvas. I like to sort of see how ideas materialise, look around, listen to people and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to leave these in because at the end of the day to take them out takes very little time and to grow them takes a lot longer. That's my way of looking at it anyway, take it or leave it. Broad beans, these are looking good. The plants are looking good, the black fly is not looking good. but. Uh, I need to do something about this, but I've not had the time. But uh, probably going to look into doing something about this this week because not only is it bad for the plant, it's incredibly uh, ugly to look at. So we'll be looking at getting rid of some black fly. But the flowers are looking good, and I'm expecting some decent crops off of these. I do love broad beans because you get them before you run a beans, and you've got a nice crop to uh, eat. There's a weed here, and that's got to. That has got black fly as well. Uh, there we go. What else have we got here? Raspberries. Again, don't know what variety these are because they were here with the allotment when it was taken over. But uh, I certainly did not see the merits in ripping them out because I wanted, you know, I like raspberries. And some of these are summer fruiting, I believe summer autumn. But uh, we shall see how they do. I'm going to tidy them up as and when I get a bit of time. But uh, the crop is well and truly cooking away and it gives the uh, bees etc something else to work on which I do indeed like. This was a bit of rhubarb that came with the allotment, there you go, won't go into that too much but uh, like a nice bit of rhubarb, rhubarb and apple crumble and uh, with a little bit of the old uh, rhubarb boiled up with honey is delicious in my opinion. Gooseberries are looking good, starting to put out a little bit of growth here as you could see. Hin and Mackie Green, I believe. And I believe this is Hin and Mackie Green as well. 
This is Hin and Mackie Red. This is actually carrying a crop. Not a massive crop, but I uh, had these growing away in pots and I thought I'd transfer them to the allotment. And there as well, look. All looking good indeed. Very happy about uh, how they're coming on. Carrying a decent amount, which is uh, what I like. So over at the other allotment, you can see the potatoes have come up pretty well. All looking good. Don't know what variety these are. These have got to be, I didn't put them in, but they've got to be earthed up. But a bit of horse manure there for enrichment. All looking nice, and the cabbages here looking fantastic. I mean, look at the size of them. It's only, it's not even June. Look at them. It's starting to hard up there. Look, I think these are greyhound. Not 100% sure, but they look like that. And they're looking really good. All covered up, obviously, because at this time of year, not so much on established plants, but on small ones, pigeons are, birds are a problem because they want them as well. But, um, you know, cabbage white butterflies, I've gone into this before, they will decimate your crop, but think nothing of it. You don't want to be going, you don't want to lose your crop to um, cabbage white butterflies, trust me. We've got some sweet corn here, all looking good, nice crop, decent amount in raised beds, expecting these. As they, in, as they get some of the uh, goodness, because these have been growing in pots, as they get some of the goodness from the soil up, it will um, help turn the leaves a little bit greener, they'll look healthier, which is... Uh, of course what we like we like healthy plants don't we more cabbages all covered up this is a good netting mesh to have actually because uh, it's, it's small and it's the cabbage white butterflies find, find it harder to uh, get in there there we go more cabbages once again and this is some kale as well this is looking good quite happy with how that's uh, looking it's looking very good indeed and here we've got some swiss chard so that's looking good okay yeah so all looking good um this isn't a political channel so i'm not going to go into it too much but there was an article i believe in the independent the other day it came up on my news feed on my phone about uh, with regards to the uk leaving the eu and potential food shortages i'm not going to go into my thoughts and feelings on any of this it's not my uh, it's not what this channel is about but uh, check out the article and read it and it may inspire you to uh, grow more of your own food. All the best.